This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So probably one of the scariest parts of a wedding day for a newer wedding photographer is the reception. So let me help you get past that with these five tips for reception photography. First off, make sure you have good modifiers. Flash modifiers are the saving grace of your flash. While you can use the flash by itself and a lot of people will just tell you, oh, just bounce it off the ceiling. Half the time, that is not always the best scenario. I personally am a huge fan of MagMod. They make the mag sphere, and the moment I started using it, it is the only thing I ever use for flash. The mag sphere is almost like a tiny soft box, and the big thing that it helps you do is give you a place to bounce your flash off of, even if your ceilings are too high or if they're black. Clearly, your subjects have to be fairly close to you, but this is a saving grace for almost any venue. You can even see in this video here where I talk about how I shoot dancing on the dance floor. Just put that mag sphere on, get close to your subjects and you're good to go. On top of that, MagMod has a whole bunch of other modifiers as well. Some to shoot the flash out further. This is great if you're shooting outdoors and you don't have a ceiling at all. Also grids to help your flash go further and gels and so much more. And again, I'm not sponsored by them. I just love their stuff that much. Second, don't be afraid to raise your ISO. I know everyone loves to sit around talking about shoot at ISO 100 because it's the best quality. Guys, as long as you're not pushing your ISO so far that you can't use the photos, raise your ISO a little bit when it gets dark. It's not going to hurt you. Generally during reception time, I'll raise my ISO to around 800, maybe even 1000, and that's enough to bring in the ambiance of the room, but also pick up my flash. This also helps me not have to have my flash power super high which gives me a faster recycle time, so I'm getting flashes no matter how fast I'm shooting. Also, at this day and age, Lightroom has the new AI denoise, which is ridiculous. You can AI denoise like almost any photo. I have a video about that up above, but really, if you start using that, it makes a huge difference. So really, don't be afraid of your ISO. Raising it a little bit makes it easier for you on your flash. You're not shooting your flash power as high as possible just to light up the room. And also it brings in the ambiance of the room, which makes your photos feel more like a reception. One thing I absolutely hate is when photographers fill the room with so much flash that it kills all the ambiance of the room. And it just looks like a bunch of people standing around in a room with the lights on. Like, I am not a fan at all. So don't be afraid to raise your ISO a little bit. And again, this doesn't mean to blast it through the roof at like 64 billion, just raise it enough so that you're getting some decent light in, and then your flash is adding fill on your subjects. Third, if your ceilings are too high, use off-camera flash. Now again, black ceilings and super high ceilings mean that you can't bounce your flash off of it. However, the mag sphere does help because again, the flash is going up, hitting the sphere, and then going out and around, but you still need a little bit more than that, and that's when I generally will use off-camera flash. Now, if you're not familiar with off-camera flash and you want to learn a little bit more, I just opened up pre-orders for my flash class to get you started with flash. And it's nothing fancy and crazy, people throwing jargon at you and stuff. You know, like you try to just learn something, you're like, I just want it to look good. That's what this course is going to be. I'll have that in the description below if you want to go ahead and sign up pre-order and get the discounted rate. But with your off-camera flash, it's very easy. What I generally do is just use speed lights, the same exact speed lights that I'm using on my camera. My camera flashes are triggering those off-camera flashes. I have grids on those and they're throwing the flash directly onto the dance floor rather than trying to shoot it up and bounce it back down. I actually have a short I did earlier, you can check it out up there, where I talk about my setup with the off-camera flash. So again, if you're outdoors where there's no ceiling, there's a black ceiling, which you can bounce off of, but clearly black is going to suck up most of that light. And or if your ceilings are just extremely high, add a little bit of off-camera flash. Put your flashes either on two sides of the dance floor facing the same direction, pointing in, or opposite of each other to give you some additional flash to fill up the dance floor so you're not just depending only on the flashes on your camera. Now, clearly, if you're shooting receptions, you're a wedding photographer trying to make money with a business, and the best way to showcase your work and get new clients is going to be this video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an online platform that will help you build your website quickly and easily. And again, as a wedding photographer, if you don't have a website, what are you doing? Seriously, you need a place where your couples can find you, look at your work, get interested in you, see your pricing, 
and then hit you up so that you can go ahead and book them. Now, I don't know if you've noticed or if you've used Squarespace, but they recently just redid a lot of their website. It looks really good. It was just basically an overall refresh. And along with that are a couple of new features like courses. So if you sell courses yourself or would like to at some point, you can do that on Squarespace. You can also sell digital and physical products. You have analytics, which is a great way to see who's visiting your site and where from. And also their customer service is absolutely amazing. So really, if you need a quick and easy way to make a website yourself, I would highly suggest Squarespace. I've used it myself for years. You can check the link in the description below for 10% off of your first website or domain. So definitely check out Squarespace for your wedding photography needs and book more clients. Fourth is don't be afraid to tell the DJ to turn off some of their lights. Y'all, one of the absolute worst things at a wedding reception are the DJ lights. Clearly when it's open dance floor, it's not that big of a deal, but recently I had a DJ who had spotlights on during the first dance and they were just so bright they just were blowing out all my photos and it was just like, ah. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, nicely saying, hey, can you either turn the light down or turn it off because it's ruining the photos. Like my flashes aren't stronger than your flash at a thousand percent. <laughs> and it's just the absolute worst. So really communicate with the people around you, even the venue itself. Sometimes the venues, they just do craziness with the lights. Like you can tell them like, hey, turn them down some or turn them up some, depending on what you're trying to do. Like really, you are the photographer. You're basically the last line of defense for this wedding to get great photos and great memories. If you don't take the time to tell other vendors like, hey, I need you to do X thing, and do it nicely, you're going to get bad photos and it's gonna fall back on you. No one's gonna care if you're like, well, the DJ's light was mad bright. They're just gonna be like, these photos suck, like do something about it. <laughs> and that's kind of the unfortunate place that photographers sit in, which is why you need to be upfront about it. So seriously, talk to your DJ teams if they're doing something that's just not like, if they, for some reason during the speeches have on their like DJ lights with the like the green and the red circles that go everywhere, like why are they on? Turn them off, you know? Like things like that, point them out really. Or like during first dance, like I get that's their dancing setup, but that should just be for open dance floor. Even then you could tell them to turn it off for a little bit so you can get some pictures of the couple themselves. And then afterwards, go ahead and you know, be like, okay, turn them on. Cause I got a couple photos, it's fine. Don't be afraid to talk to your vendors, really this will be one of the biggest things you're gonna deal with. And if you don't do something about it, it will bite you in the butt, trust me. And fifth, use continuous lighting in certain situations. Now, clearly during the full reception, you can't just have a light on the whole time. It's super annoying for the couple and the guest. And honestly, if you're not doing video, you should just not be using continuous light at all times. That's what video does. Now, however, for things like sparkler exits or even some portraits at night, I personally prefer continuous light. Now, again, the way I like to do this is with the Loom Cube, which I'm also not sponsored by, but I absolutely love this thing. I bring it with me to every single wedding. Now for sparkler exits, I have a video about that. Y'all can check that out up above as well. But I'm using these so that I can bring in the ambiance of the sparklers and then light up my couple just a little bit. Again, one thing I absolutely hate is when photographers use so much flash, it just kills the vibes. Sparklers look so stupid when your flash is overpowering them. They just look like, you know, like they don't do anything. Whereas when you have a nice shot and you're bringing in the ambiance of the sparklers and then just throwing a little extra light in there to make sure that you have enough light, you can see them glowing and it just looks so magical. It's so much better. Also, when I'm doing portraits at night, I like to have an assistant just hold my loom cube up so that it gets nice lighting on them and then I can go ahead and adjust my settings that way. It's just so much easier than having to set up 50 different lights. And again, for a strobish, you can do really cool things with a bunch of different flashes, but I'm not that advanced with flashes. I'm just gonna be for real. It's easier for me to just bring a nice quick LED, light them up, get the shot. Whatever works for you is fine. And that's a big thing we need to remember as a photographer and in the wedding photography industry. Don't let people shame you because they're like, oh, you can't use 50 flashes with different gels and all these. It doesn't matter. Are you getting a great product? Do your photos look good? Are your couples happy? That's what matters, really, to each their own. And there's nothing wrong with it. I've seen amazing flash photos, like follow the MagMod Instagram. They have some amazing flash photos. And then also sometimes I just want to take the shot and get it done with real quick. So 
do whatever works for you, but don't be afraid of using continuous light, especially during the sparkler exit. And honestly, these videos here is gonna help you be a better wedding photographer in general, not just for the lighting and the shooting, but also the customer service side of everything.